Order. First order of business approval of the minutes. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, motion carries. All right, Mr. Mayor. Communication Tower on Hudson Road. And we're going to bring with us our communications. I guess you, we'll, we'll just call him an expert because that is the that is the truth. <laughs> I wouldn't say that about a lot of the rest of us about some issues, but what we have here in, uh, is a, an opportunity, and Mr. Gurley is going to. We didn't put anything on your iPad. Miss Vicky is out of pocket, but anyway, pass this around, please. This uh, this is going to outline. And we'll just let Joe go ahead and we'll pass around what you got. Huh? Do you have multiple copies? I don't. Uh, this is just a, just a set of pictures. Okay. Uh, if anyone's uh, interested in looking at the And we'll start this property. around and let you guys look at it. When that gets around there, <coughs> this will keep me on point. And I'll just sort of tell you what we've got here. We have a 300-foot tower on uh, Hudson Road that's been owned for any number of years by Mr. Elam and Mary Carlton on their property. It was built in 1986 and it's been leased to a whole series of uh, communication entities starting with Quest, Pinnacle Towers, Corbin Towers, Worldwide Communications, Delava Wireless, etc. And so over the years they would just keep passing this down from one other entity to another uh, they had the responsibility for paying the property taxes uh, on that parcel there. And over years, they did just that. And they also paid Mr. Carlton a lease fee. In any event, after time went on, these people defaulted on their lease, uh, quit paying him, and quit paying the property taxes. So we sort of got onto this when all of this has sort of reached the level of. Uh, being behind almost $7,400 in property taxes just on that little piece of property with that tower sitting on it that they owe Rutherford County. And so it's almost into, it's into the chantry process and it will proceed onward to some sort of foreclosure if this doesn't get paid. But anyway, that being said, the tower has been sitting there for a number of years, completely unused, right, Mr. Gurley? It's been unused and it's been unlit which is a violation of the AFCC regulations. Uh, this company that currently has the lease, uh, I just happened to come across this tower. I was, the CED has a water tank there on Whittis, and I was looking at that to, as a site to possibly build another tower for the county. And as I drove up to that location, I looked, and there right in front of me is this tower. I started querying around, and I uh, found out that it hadn't been lit. Go to Middle Tennessee Electric, found out it hadn't been lit in over four years. Uh, start doing some digging, go to the trustee's office, et cetera, et cetera. Um, find out it's behind on taxes, go talk to Mr. Carlton, find out he's behind on rent payments. Um, we notify FAA and FCC because no notum to Airman had ever been issued on this. Uh, and so, uh, we started digging into it, and what we found was this company has a, a, a pattern of similar uh, things across the country, uh, basically abandoning the towers, uh, failing to pay the uh, uh, property taxes, failing to uh, pay the rent, and also failing to light the towers. There, I found uh, multiple instances of uh, federal levied fines against the company, uh, and. Uh, so we started digging into it even more. Uh, this tower would serve to provide some coverage for the southwestern portion of the county. And uh, we looked at, uh, the, one of the first things I did uh, was uh, get a tower company to go look at it to see if it was still really a decent tower, and it is. Uh, it's got a lot of life left in it does have a small building there, it does have a generator, we don't have any idea what kind of shape those are in. Uh, but uh, the tower itself would cost probably 300, 350, 400,000 to uh, build something similar today. Um, 
So we saw an opportunity to uh, try to um, gain this tower uh, at a reasonable cost. And Mr. Mayor, you want to explain, or you want me okay. to explain what we propose? All right. So if you go down to item number two here, what I've sort of, sort of outlined the preliminary terms. Can I ask a question? Where, yes, sir. Now, who who is who owns the tower? It's it's Mr. Carlton actually owns the tower. And who's these not, people have defaulted in the lease, and he's given them notice that they're in. He default. owns the property. And so he's not paying the taxes, but he's not receiving any rent on it. He right. Would, and they were supposed to be paying the taxes on this little tower parcel and the tower, and they the people who was leasing. Yeah, yeah, and they they, they haven't done they, that they for a number a of years. Did he know the property taxes weren't being paid? No, not for a while. He does now. <laughs> <laughs> the tax, the tax okay. bills were being sent to the uh, okay. San Francisco to, to a, wireless and somewhere else in another up. state. And, but finally, they actually started sending him a copy of it as well. It, it's a so BBI someone else was shield managing the tower, oh, yes. and they were doing all the leases. Uh, that's he right. Has, he, had, he was just getting a, he, a check every year if, on it. If you go on this company's website, uh, which you can access, uh, it looks like this is a, this is a modern uh, portrayed as a modern, up to date, fully functional with all amenities uh, site available for leasing, which obviously it's it's not. Uh, but anyway, okay. that sorry. being the case, here's here's sort of what I've outlined under item number two. There is what needs to be done, or hopefully, first thing is we need an official legal determination by our county attorney that these prior leases are in default. There has been a letter sent to those to the lessee by the owner, and we think that that's probably okay, but we want to be sure that that's proper notice of default and cancellation has been made. So all of this that we're doing would have to be confirmed. Then we, uh, these unpaid payments of property taxes, we would assume the payment of those property taxes on behalf of uh, Rutherford County, which would clean up the, the debt that's owed to us. We'd be paying ourselves for the property taxes. That's, we would have an initial lease term of 25 years with a payment of $500 per year <coughs> with an option for us to cancel this at any time. We'd have a second lease period of 25 years with the same option. At the end of the lease now, Rutherford County would be responsible for the cost and removal of this tower. It would have to come down in all likelihood and that would cost us some dollars to take that down. But Mr. Gurley says it likely somebody would take it down for the salvage value yeah. of, of the thing. And that's basically 50 years from now. Mm -hmm. It could be. It could. It, we may not want it even after 15 or 10 or 20, but, but at that point in time when we decide we don't want it and it needs to come down, we would have to take that responsibility to do that. And it probably wouldn't cost us much of anything if we could get somebody just to take it down for the value of the metal. Okay, right now, you just looked at those pictures, you can see that there is microwave equipment still sitting up there, unusable. That has to come down first. We want to take that down first. We want to install this lighting and get it back in compliance. And Mr. Gurley thinks that could cost just doing that piece, taking this stuff down and putting the lighting on it that needs to be put. Now, we hadn't put any other equipment on it yet. Okay, that's would put it in compliance as far as FAA is concerned would cost us maybe $25,000. Then, after we get past that, we'd have to define how we're going to, uh, what, uh, what stuff we're going to actually put up there to communicate and improve its communications and make it an integrated part of all this other tower work that we're doing. Become part of the project, <coughs> the overall project. In the grand scheme of things, and when our infrastructure was proposed before on the previous towers, where is this tower in proximity of the where the, it should be as far as the study that was done for, uh, for our dead zones? It's in reasonable proximity. Uh, it is, uh, we would, you know, instead of uh, offsetting a pattern from the far edge of the county uh, back to the east, we would offset a pattern to the west because we don't need any coverage off of that site between that site and and, so, and Marcusboro. So, so basically, it, it, it's in. So it, it it's fits. In area where it, it fits in our, our yeah, needs. It fits in. Uh, in fact, I, I have it on a map. If anybody wants to take a look, or be happy to discuss uh, how it fits more specifically. It complements and improves. The and and it also uh, is a good microwave relay hop. If we need to go ahead and put another uh, uh, 
uh, add receivers uh, or keep receivers at uh, at Eagleville at the water tank there. Uh, it, uh, you, we cannot shoot from Tiger Hill to Eagleville because of her sales knob. You run right into it about 500 feet below the top of it. But with, it, with this 300 foot tower, would it? Would it, it gets high, above that. It, it gets, gets up to uh, 1,200 and something feet. So it has a clear path, as you know, the little knobs right. depend exactly, but I've already plotted it. It has a clear path from Tiger Hill to there, from there to uh, Eagleville water tank. Mm. Yes. Does the uh, microwave equipment on it already, is any of that salvageable or could be sold to anybody? Well, the, it, the price mean, that we got of removing the dishes, there are six 10-foot dishes up there. Those are huge. And when you look at six 10-foot dishes, they're about three feet deep. Uh, the quote that I got from a vendor uh, was for about 10000 and they scrapped the dishes and the hardware associated with it. Someone's already came in and salvaged the uh, waveguide, which happens to be pure copper. Wonder mm -hmm. one. Um, and uh, they worked for it, didn't they? Yeah, they had to work for it. <laughs> but they have done that already. Uh, the microwave equipment that would be inside, whatever's inside, we don't want to cut the locks on the building until we have possession of it. Uh, if there is any left inside, would be uh, very obsolete. Uh, type of stuff, you know, we're talking about 80s vintage stuff when this was built in 86. So this, mm -hmm. the salvage of it's going to help offset that cost too. Yeah. That's, that's the salvage is help offset the cost and instead of having to, this tower was originally lit with red lights and painted red and white for the typical uh, thing in the 80s. Uh, the way to do it now is to put a strobe, a uh, dual mode strobe, it's white in the daytime, red at night. Mm -hmm. Uh, that way the tower doesn't have to be painted. Painting a tower is both costly and uh, difficult and time consuming. Uh, has to be done about every five years, so uh, strobes are the way to go. That's going to cost about eight or nine thousand dollars to to do that. Mr. Chairman, this, this fits in our needs. Uh, I think it's a good plan and I make the motion that we accept the mayor's recommendation. Got a motion to accept. Second. Got a second. Call the roll. Commissioner Baum? Yes. Commissioner Coggin? Yes. Commissioner Cook? Yes. Commissioner Farley? Yes. Commissioner Gooch? Yes. Commissioner Young? Yes. Commissioner McAdoo? Yes. Commissioner <coughs> McAdoo, you yes. probably remember when this went up. I do. <laughs> You're the only one on county commission yeah, who went <laughs> Gary may win. No, he's no. close. Uh, no, Steve Sandler's close. No. You. Steve, Steve uh, come and Joyce come on at the same, same time. Same time. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, I think during that time, Mr. Carlton was either a school superintendent right. or something. Yeah. Yeah. So, Ms. Yeah. So, so, <laughs> Shelton, how, would, how are you going to craft this uh, resolution? We want the authority to pursue this and uh, develop a lease that's acceptable uh, to the owner and to Rutherford County with these terms that I've sort of outlined there, okay? <coughs> and sort of a grant of your recommendation to allow us to spend up to $25,000 uh, on this first go round to get this equipment off and get it lighted, okay? And then we'll come back for when renovation. we need. How about that for renovation? For what? For renovation yeah. on the tower. All right. Okay. And then when we actually decide what to put on the tower, we'll, we'll have to get permission on how many dollars that takes and approval on that later. You want authority to sign that lease? Yes. But that modular building, it may be so old, and all, all the wiring is actually done in interior. In, uh, interior we won't violate any electrical. No, no, I'm talking about it. That's actually done at the factory. That, that, yeah, this is, this is a uh, fiberglass shed. My suspicion is uh, that it's not usable. I'm in the process of trying to acquire four or five of uh, actually nine or ten, but for our county and uh, Wilson and Williamson of the old Nextel concrete buildings right. uh, that they're being uh, uh, um, salvaged right now. Uh, got tentatively, uh, tentatively go on, yes, we'll give you X number of these yeah. for nothing, uh, except for getting a crane company to come in and pick them up and haul them where we need them. Yeah, some of the modular buildings, they sit there a while, they can deteriorate 
and the wiring and stuff get in there. And this it. type of thing, it was kind of blown foam and, and with the fiberglass shell like a boat or whatever, and my suspicion would be that, yes, it's I, I guess we are renting the entire 8.2 acres or... I, you know, it, yeah, I don't eight, know what it's actually. Eight, eight point four really, something acres. So or this will be part of the lease. Yeah, We've got to okay. get that sort of clarified and nailed down. You will have no issues with eel. No, no, not at all. I just, <laughs> I thought about the tower. I was like, a tower doesn't yeah. take eight point two acres. Then you got all the guy wires. Yeah, well, no up. issues with eel. And, and of course, we'll work with the uh, uh, work center or home. the sheriff's department to get about three or four days of inmate labor out there to clean some of the brush out. Well, that ain't, <laughs> it's pretty overgrown out there. That eight point four acres, you got a fall zone and yep. everything else. Right. Yeah. Well, that's true. Yeah. 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 Well, any other business? I see you, Sheriff. You got any business you like to bring before the committee? You just like being up here. Yeah. His yeah. guardiness. <laughs> okay, we got a report in front of us. The general capital building program report. I think each one of you got a copy. Uh, I need a motion to accept this report. So moved. We got a motion to second. Second. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor of accepting <coughs> this report, let me. me know by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Report accepted. Any other business? Mr. Bass. This will just be a point of information. The uh, Midland Forcible Volunteer Fire Department did uh, bring us a check for $20,000, which they had promised to do in the beginning for that, toward the construction of that building. So we now have enough money put together to finish this sprinkling assignment, okay? Good deal. Good. Well, hopefully we can get those guys in there and Quick. get the certificate of occupancy. And yeah. Any other business? Not. How? How's the Elam Road station coming? I hadn't been out there, but they they had a notice to proceed a few weeks ago, so I, I don't know what's happened, honestly. I got a phone update from Harold. He called me and told me that they're pouring the concrete out there. So <laughs> you get a phone I get a phone update. call every day on it. So <laughs> He called me the other day. He went to my town. <laughs> Any other business to come before the committee? Entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved.